I would like to show how to play uh, trills comfortably from the larger motions to the small ones. Trills are single rotations, meaning that when you play, if we use let's say the second and the third finger, when you play the second finger, the finger hand and forearm turn to the left, and when you go to the third finger, they turn to the right. It's going left, right, all the way to the forearm. Everything has to move together as a unit so that there are no pulls, there are no isolation of fingers, there's no reaching, stretching, and there's no pushing hard into the key to play the next finger. Everything moves together. The finger has its little bit of weight supplemented by the hand and especially by the forearm in key descent. And that's how it goes. Whether it's two, three, one, two. Even three and four. The fourth is considered to be a weak finger. It is weak only when it's played in an isolated fashion. The moment it's connected to the forearm, it gets exactly the same support as all other fingers. As long as it's not isolating, trying to move to it, that is using the rotational movements to get there, it feels as powerful as any other finger. So it's left, right, left, right. And if necessary, when people first come, and it's a very common question how to play trills comfortably because people get very, very tight uh, when they play the fingers by themselves. So the motion may be a little bit larger in order to feel it. And of course, we concentrate first on the form because it's generally frozen. As the form gets freer and moves more and more together with the fingers, you can see my fingers are not dead. They're just moving in the right amount to feel the connection to the form. So they move together. And as we get comfortable, we can start making the movement smaller. And as we make movements smaller, they can go faster. In other words, if we have large movements, we can't go fast. So it's in the training, it's a step to free everything up, to, to feel the comfort of moving from one finger to the next, and then minimizing it so that we can play quickly. Uh, same. And to the question is, so how do you know that it's still there? It feels as comfortable, larger, as it does smaller. As a matter of fact, it was meant to be small. We have enlarged the movements to work them into the body. But where it feels really natural is in its natural habitat, which is as small as necessary, still feeling the synchronization of the movement. So at no point the finger is moving in one direction, the arm is already pulling in the other direction. Those dual pulls are one of the causes for tension and limitations. So this is how we do, this is how we work it in, and it gets smaller and smaller. And if you stood right next to me, you would still see that tiny bit of movement from side to side. Now, that holds true when the intervals get larger. If we go, let's say, a fifth apart, same rotation, we go to a sixth, what we can see, of course, as the distance gets larger, we have to accommodate it by slightly larger rotation, slightly larger preparatory motion that will get us across without having to reach and stretch. So it's the combination of the rotational movements and the lateral, the walking hand and arm, working together in minimal amount. Again, larger, smaller, same for seven. The forearm changes slightly its position to be right in the middle of the two notes. Sorry. It all gets integrated, all becomes a stew with the different ingredients making one dish here. It's one feeling. Same for the active. If we stretch, it's one result. If we have 
this movements again slightly larger when necessary the beginning becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and of course that's the answer to how do we play broken octaves so it's right here